Jason. So nice. Yeah. Feels good, yeah. right? Power at its yeah. desk. Just ladies running the Daily Show. That's it. I'm oh. very into this. Yeah. All female guests. <laughs> week. That's I what love we it. got. Yeah, it's great to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. <laughs> you, uh, you've been busy on many things, but one of them is, uh, is your very popular podcast, <gasps> Drama Queens. Yes. Uh, which is basically a rewatch podcast of One Tree Hill, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, we realized that the nine years of that show that we made were sort of a blur. Uh, and people at these lovely events always ask us, oh, you remember when? And we were like, no, <laughs> we don't. I'm so sorry, I don't remember. And um, our, our sort of COVID project was launching this podcast and it's actually been really special to relive it. And every so often we're all just sitting on Zoom sobbing and we're like, we get it, we, it's really good. This is super emotional. Very therapeutic, I would imagine. Yeah. Because when you started that show, you were really young. You were like 20 years old, right? I, I had just turned 21. Uh, Hillary Burton and I actually, our birthdays are one week apart. Uh, we had both just shredded our fake IDs. I'm so sorry, mom. <laughs> and, and we were like, we can get into bars now. We are so grown up. Turns out at 21, you are still absolutely a child and um, it's <laughs> yes. really weird to look back and see well, <laughs> like... yeah. there there are so many documentaries that have come out recently yeah. about women entering the entertainment industry at that time in the mm. early 2000s Paris Hilton Britney Spears Pamela Anderson and hearing yeah. their side of the story mm -hmm. what was that like going into the industry that young uh, <laughs> you know that famous adage it was the best of times and the worst of times yeah. it was that yeah. You know, it's it's so special to go and do what you love and, and to get to do art for a living. And we worked for a total pig and that was awful. And so it it was very confusing. I mean, I'm like, women are laughing. I'm like, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Where you're like, I love my job, but I also really hate it here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? No, I, I don't know any pigs at this <laughs> job. I love this job. We love this job. I love it so much. This is different. This is different. Yeah. This, this truly is different. It is, and, yes. and you know when it is. I, I worked on this amazing show in Toronto last year that was different. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I, when I look at sort of what's on my resume, almost everything has been amazing. It just sucks when the things that you've done the longest have been sort of toxic and awful. Yeah, but yeah. How, how amazing that you talk about it with your castmates because mm -hmm. having those conversations, and I, I want to believe that things are different now. Yeah. Women still struggle with these things, but by you talking about it, it, it makes other women not feel alone. That's been the really special part of it. And when people ask women, like, why are you so obsessed with this? It's like, why were you never paying attention? Right. Uh, why, when we were all crying for help, did you go like, it's not that bad, you're lucky. Um, that's weird. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think for us, it's been really, the unexpected side effect of this, jo this podcast job is that it's been really healing and it's been really empowering. And what's been really beautiful is the, the sort of, connections that we've been making with listeners, with other women in our industry, with women who were directing on our show back then, mm. who listen to an episode, reach out and say, that was totally going on. I heard that, or I was told this. It, it's been really affirming. And so I don't really care who's mad about it. We're here to Good. heal. And uh, we are very much reclaiming our territory. Good. It feels nice. So much of what you do is is you do so much activism. You are extremely vocal about issues that you care about, gun reform, mm. uh, uh, voting rights, uh, women's reproductive health. You were just honored yesterday yeah. by the National Institution of Reproductive Health for your work. Yeah. How does that feel? Congratulations. It was wild. It was so wild. And they, they gave me this like big, gorgeous, heavy award. And I was like, wonderful, I can leave here and feel very special and also have a weapon, just in case. Because <laughs> that is being a woman in the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was like, I don't have to carry my keys today, I got this. <laughs> um, <laughs> jokes aside though, it was, it was very special. And I think having a platform is a privilege. And I don't expect anybody to do what I do or believe what I believe necessarily, but I do think for me, knowing that this is a megaphone uh, means that what I've been 
privileged enough to have access to, you know, study education, the words of women like Gloria Steinem and Brittany Packnett Cunningham and my friends who run the media are like, I get to listen to incredible leaders and to amplify those voices and to talk about equity, whether it's in reproductive justice or justice for women of color or black maternal mortality rates or gun reform because gun violence touches all of us. That's that's my work. Mm. And you know, in the same way that we as women need men to talk about sexual violence, cause like it can't just be us. We're like, please help us right. talk to each other. <laughs> my God, like it's, it's the same way that I feel about as women, when we look at the diversity within, you know, our gender group, and then we look outward at how we need to stand up for our trans friends and folks, mm -hmm. like, you know, all of the beautiful black women I see in this audience, like racial justice among in feminism can't be your job. Like that's our job. Yeah. Women who look yeah. like us are the problem. Yeah. So yeah. for me, what has been, you know, a privilege and an awakening and hard and inspiring has been getting really fired up about an injustice and then starting to pull the thread and going, oh my God, it's all connected. It's systemic everywhere. Mm -hmm. We have work to do, but I do think we can do it together. Organizations like the NIRH are doing incredible work. They're proactive for us and our, and our freedoms and our rights. And it's those sorts of groups, and obviously this group, because y'all are fabulous, <laughs> that I want to hang out with. You, um... You're about to start a play in London yes. called 222, mm -hmm. A Ghost Story. Did yeah. I get that right? 222, yeah. A Ghost Story. Uh -huh. Are you excited to go work in a country where they have access to uh, health care for women? Yeah, wow. That might be nice. I, I realized it was, <laughs> it was a really big deal when um, I had to apply for my work visa, and they were like, have you ever tried to sneak into the United Kingdom to access health care? And I was like, oh, yeah, we have to do that, I guess. That's weird. Yeah, it's no, coming to that. But when while I'm doing this job, can I go to the doctor? That would be so cool. Uh, tell, what, yeah. tell us what the play is, is about. It's a supernatural story, right? It involves it ghosts. It is. So I don't want to give it away, but okay. the thing we all loved about Friends was watching a group of people in an apartment hang out, right? So imagine it's four instead of six friends. And when their dinner party gets like a little bit lit, <laughs> People start up a conversation, essentially, of who does and doesn't believe in ghosts, and suddenly we're talking about belief and faith and upbringing and education and what's bigger than us, and it's very spicy. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And I love a good ghost story. It, to do research for this role, did you just go visit the Senate? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I should have. Yeah. I think the place is should've. Is this the first time you're doing theater? It is. Oh. The West End will be my stage debut unless you count our town in the eighth grade. Oh, same, right. same, 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 yeah. same, same. You're gonna, you're gonna be brilliant. Thank you're you. gonna be brilliant. I can't wait to see you in this. I'm really excited and completely terrified. Yeah. And then I have these moments where I'm like, okay, we're doing eight shows a week in front of people. What if someone has a bad day? <laughs> I'm like, what? I don't know. And then it was actually one of my girlfriends uh, from the podcast, Hillary, said, dude, when you do a TV show, you're on set for like 14 to 17 hours a day. This will literally be the least amount of hours you've ever worked in a week. And I went, yes. oh, yeah, okay. Yes. I got, oh, right. Maybe I can read <laughs> more books or something. You have a lot of downtime. Yeah. That's a great gig. Plus, you're working with an audience. This is well, amazing. they're lovely. Yeah. You, um, you once said that you weren't interested in, a, in working in politics back in 2013, you yeah. said this, but you said, ask me in 10 years. So yeah. what's up? What do you think? <laughs> well, so interesting. Um, so many people for the last number of years uh, have said to me, like, please run. Mm -hmm. And then... Nancy Pelosi, what a weird thing I'm about to say to you. Nancy Pelosi said to me one day, like, it'll all be better when you're president. And I went, I bet you say that to all the girls, but thank you so much. And well, that is an endorsement. It was, right so, it was so deeply flattering. And then I went like, well, I guess if we're electing people from TV, anyone who knows anything about 
public policy or public health or education or like women would be cool. Right. You um, can string a sentence together. Yeah, yes. you know, mm -hmm. articulate humans who like other people instead of wish ill upon their lives would be nice. But I, um, I think as I've, as I've learned so much over the last 10 years, I don't know what it's gonna look like. I don't know where I'm supposed to go yet yeah. because I wanna do what is the most useful. And I think a lot of people, whether they wanna run for office or run a company, do it because they wanna center themselves in the experience. Mm -hmm. If I could be most useful serving an elected office, great. If I can be most useful raising money for incredible C4 candidates across the country and making sure we flip state houses so we're not, you know, thrown back to the dark ages, mm -hmm. into it. Like, literally just tell me how to help and I'm down, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we so appreciate all the work that you do, and and I, I really appreciate you coming on too. You were a delight. Thank you. Oh my God. Sophia